Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. So in this particular video we shall discuss about the heavy metal poisoning. So we shall discuss about the three metal poisoning that is the mercury, lead and the arsenic poisoning. So we shall focus on what are the different causes or sources for the poisoning. Then the symptoms which are displayed because of the poisoning in a particular person and what are the treatment lines for the poisoning. So coming to the first type of poisoning that is the mercury poisoning and the trip. So coming to the causes of this mercury uh, poisoning. So what are the sources for mercury poisoning? So first one is the thermometer. So we know that the thermometers which we use to measure the temperature it contains the mercury, right? So accidental breakage of such thermometers and contact with the mercury may take place. So this is the first source. Next is the dental amalgams. So as we are all aware, as because of the dental cavities, sometimes the doctors need to fill the cavities, right? By root canaling and uh, other techniques. So they fill that cavity rather than removing the tooth or tooth extraction. The dental cavities, these are filled with certain mixture of the metals. So traces of metals are also present in those amalgams. So that also contains the mercury as one of the metals. So from that amalgams, uh, uh, mercury may get leaked out in small amounts and poisoning may take place. Next cause is fluorescent light bulbs. It's a bulb fluorescent light bulbs which we used uh, in the household or the disc batteries which are present maybe in the toys or certain electronic uh, appliances. Next is the electrical switches which also contains mercury or certain folklore medications may also the traditional medications may also contain mercury. Then coming to the symptoms of mercury poison. So this includes the symptoms which may be due to the vapor inhalation. So inhalational poisoning if at all has taken place, it may result in acute necrotizing bronchitis that is inflammation in the bronchi may take place, pneumonitis may take place, inflammation of the lungs or sometimes deaths are also on record. Apart from that insomnia that is lack of sleep, forgetfulness, anorexia that is uh, the person's um, you know tendency to eat less it's, it's a type of eating disorder when the person tends to eat less maybe because of the concern of weight usually okay, so such type of feeling may arise a person may not want to eat mild tremors may also be precipitated apart from that further as the poisoning progresses for the chronic time periods then progressive tremors which may continue over a period of time or erythism so this is a specific symptom characteristic of mercury poisoning that is erythism that is reddening of the palms may take place sometimes emotional uh, liability the person may be emotionally disturbed memory impairments may also be seen apart from this salivation excessive sweating may take place or renal toxicity which may be characterized by proteinuria that is appearance of the protein in the urine or nephrotic syndrome may get precipitated next symptom is maculopapular rash now what do you mean by this macula it's a type of rash that is a redness or lesions may be seen on the skin now why it is named so that's because macula macula means flattened right so flattened lesions are also present and papilla yeah, that means a raised uh, lesions right so both type of lesions are seen on the skin so that's why it is called as maculopapular rash. So this is a characteristic feature of mercury poisoning. Apart from that, swollen and painful extremities, that is your limbs may be swollen or the fingers uh, might be swollen and uh, they may be painful. Then peripheral neuropathy, that is the neurons may also get damaged in the periphery. Hypertension may be seen or renal tubular dysfunction. That is the kidney tubules might not function appropriately so that the urine formation and the absorptive secretory processes may get affected. Coming to the treatment of mercury poisoning, the specific treatment is to 
avoid the pulmonary complications which we have seen is the IV hydrocortisone. Okay, corticosteroids may be given. Then dimercaprol or depenicillamine as the chelating agent. However, in case of organic mercury poisoning, it should not be treated with dimercaprol because this may result in higher mercury levels in the brain. So, this precaution should be taken. So, this is to do with the mercury poisoning. The next type of metal poisoning is the lead poisoning and its treatment. So, let us talk about the causes first. So, the dust or the soil which is tainted, tainted means polluted, polluted with the lead which may be arising from the old paints or dust and soil which is tainted with lead from the leaded gasolines which are available or the tap waters which is uh, coming towards the homes through the lead pipe. So, lead may get uh, infested into the water. Okay, so, lead may enter into the water and uh, the persons who are consuming that tap water may get exposed to the lead or the paint and dust chips which are arising from the old toys or furniture or pottery glazes. So, it contains mercury. So, the oh, as they become older, we have seen that small quantities chipping may take place from the surfaces. So, that mercury may also result in the poisoning when the person gets excessively exposed to such, uh, such kind of lead. Okay, then coming to the symptoms. So, the damage to the brain and the nervous system may take place in case of poisoning. As a result of this, behavioral and learning problems may be seen. Growth of the person may get slowed down. There may be hearing problems which may arise, headaches, anemia that is decrease in the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood, RBCs may be damaged, HB level may be low, seizures may get precipitated mainly in the susceptible individuals or sometimes the behavior of the person may become aggressive, too aggressive. Okay. or intelligence may get affected. Okay. Since the brain is getting affected, there may be low intelligence and long lasting belly pain. So, these are some of the symptoms. Then coming to the treatment. So, as we have seen anemia or growth problem. So, these can be solved by the various supplements which can be given like iron supplements or calcium supplements. So, you can have calcium rich food or phosphorus supplements can be given. The person may be encouraged to consume food on a regular basis. So, time to time meals or snacks can be given to the person. So, also you should keep an eye on the blood lead levels, BLL that is. Okay, so, in case if the levels are more than 70 micrograms per deciliter or if at all the person shows the symptoms of encephalopathy, that is, uh, the person may sometimes go into unconsciousness as well due to the encephalopathy because it affects the brain okay, due to the accumulation of the toxins. So, in that case, hospital admission may be required or administration of parenteral chelators are required over here. Okay. In case if the blood lead levels are more than 45 micrograms per liter, oral chelators are sufficient in this particular case. So, this to do with the lead poisoning. Next is the arsenic poisoning and the treatment. Okay. Causes include the groundwater. So, this may be the source Arcan arsenic may get mixed with the groundwater which if consumed it may result to the exposure and poisoning. Then arsenic containing mineral ores, industrial processes. So, persons working in such areas may get affected or semiconductor manufacturing Gallium arsenide is the offending agent. Fossil fuels may also lead to arsenic uh, exposure. Then wood treated with arsenic preservatives. So arsenic may be used as a preservative to um, preserve the woods for a longer period of time. Okay. Then uh, metallurgy. Metallurgy it is the procedure wherein the metals are heated and uh, treated okay, so that to obtain the metals okay. even smelting to obtain the pure metals like copper zinc or lead or refining of the metals and the ores so in such procedures also arsenic may be utilized so in, these are all the sources of industrial poisoning and exposure to the arsenic also glass manufacturing utilizes arsenic and certain other commercial products as well 
so the processing in the commercial industries may lead to the exposure uh, towards the arsenic and this may result in the deleterious effects apart from that other sources includes pesticides herbicides fungicides so these may also contain arsenic certain food materials seafood fish this may also get contaminated or antiparasitic drugs may also lead to arsenic poisoning and certain popular remedies may also contain arsenic okay so this may result into arsenic poisoning so these are the causes coming to the symptoms red or swollen skin skin changes like warts may appear or lesions may appear abdominal pain nausea vomiting diarrhea so these are all the gi symptoms abnormal heart rhythm okay heart rates may change contact type property may get altered muscle cramps may be seen then tingling of the fingers and the toes specifically okay it may be inconvenient and scratching itching may be seen darkening of the skin may also occur or constant sore throat may be seen and persistent digestive issues so these are some of the symptoms of the arsenic poisoning then coming to the treatment gastric lavage should be done okay so the whole bowel irrigation with polyethylene glycol can be done okay. if in case uh, of the consumption okay accidental consumption so in that case gi should be cleared up then skin decontamination in case of dermal exposure should be done supportive care if at all required like uh, the breathing ventilatory support or the pain treatment and muscle cramps or gi symptoms so supporting care may be required for such uh, kind of symptoms then chelation therapy this should be instituted promptly okay, within minutes to hours you should go for chelation therapy maybe with bal that is british anti levicide which is administered by intra muscular route then saxima that is dmsa that is dimercapto succinic acid this is given uh, by the oral route ts is another chelating agent which may be given by per oral or intravenous route then d penicillamine this is little bit less effective so these are preferred ones so pal this is quite preferred one to um, carry out the chelation therapy so that the further exposure should be prevented Okay, so whatever is present in the body, absorbed into the body, it can it will get chelated, and further exposure and interaction with the uh, body systems will be prevented. So this to do with the treatment of uh, the arsenic poisoning. So this finishes the heavy metal poisoning. So we have covered the mercury poisoning, the lead poisoning, and the arsenic poisoning. What are the symptoms? what are the causes and how the treatment can be given to tackle with this poisoning situations thank you for watching